Okay, so here's the deal with adding and subtracting these things. Um, first of all, they have to have the same things under the radical in order to be able to combine them. Okay, if you want to look at those square roots like they're variables, okay, they have to be the exact same variable in order to be able to add or subtract them. Uh, or you can think about it like fractions. Fractions have to have common denominators. Okay, whatever it is that makes you remember, I gotta have the same thing under the radical. Now, the only way you can change what's under the radical is if you simplify them like you're really simplifying them. Now, with this first example here, though, there is some simplifying that we can do first. Okay, we do have two expressions that have the same radical. They both have the square root of 24. So I'm going to deal with that first. Um, so like I said, if you want to look at it like they're variables, then it's like I've got 2x minus x. So that just leaves me with one of those square roots of 24. 2 minus 1, you subtract the coefficients. You keep the square root part the same. Okay, now, right now, we cannot add something that has the square root of 6 to something that's the square root of 24. However, we can simplify the square root of 24, can we not? Yeah, yeah. that is 2 square roots of 6. Now, just for the sake of space and, and time and whatnot, I'm going to skip the, those intermediate steps. But 24 is 4 times 6, the square root of 4 is 2, you leave the 6 under. Um, so then, final we combine those coefficients, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So this all boils down to the negative square root of 6. Similarly uh, to how we checked the problems a second ago, you can check these. Again, it won't tell you if you simplified it fully, but it will tell you if you made a mistake or not. Just make sure that you close your parentheses after every square root and you can type in the original expression, get its decimal value, type in what you say the simplified answer is, and those decimal values should match. Okay? And they do, again, it won't tell you if you did it completely, because if I type in that intermediate step of negative 3 square root to 6 plus the square root of 24, guess what? It's going to give me the same answer if I remember to close my parentheses like I'm supposed to. It's going to give me the same answer, okay, but that first purple line is not the final answer that I'm looking for, okay? It is equivalent, but it, it's not fully, fully simplified, okay? Oh, let's look at another one. Negative 3 square root of 5 minus the square root of 27 plus 3 square root of 12. Now, at this point, there's nothing we can do to this one, okay? Now, we can rewrite them, yes, okay? I'm just saying there's no combining that we can do the way that it's written. So we need to simplify any of these radicals that can be simplified. Now, uh, the square root of 5 can't be simplified. It is what it is. The square root of 27 is 9 times 3, and the square root of 9 is 3, so if 3 stays under, and the square root of 12, we can express as 4 times 3. So the square root of 4 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, again, if you need to show the intermediate steps, that's fine. Please do. I'm just saving time and space here. Okay, now we have two of these that we can combine. We cannot combine them with that negative 3 square root of 5 can't be combined, but we've got negative 3 plus 6, which gives us positive 3 square roots of 3. Well, no, you can't. You can't just add their coefficients. They, they have to have the same radical after. Now, if you really want to, you could factor out that 3 from the front. Um, you may see it written like this, um, if, it, if it's like in a book or something like that. If it's on an answer key, it may show up like this. Probably not, but it might. Okay, I just factored out the coefficients. And then since the square root of 5 was negative, they saved space by changing the order. 
So it's the square root of b minus the square root of pi. Okay, but I'm fine with what I have boxed there. I'm good with that being the final answer. Okay, we can do this with cube roots as well. Same principle applies. You gotta have the same thing under the, the cube roots um, in order to be able to combine them. And sometimes you need to simplify what's under the cube root in order to combine them. Now, uh, 125 is the perfect cube. So, I mean, there are a couple of different ways that we could take this first step. You could say, well, oh, I have two of them plus two of them. So you could say, well, that's four times the cube root of 125 plus three cube roots of 81. And then say, well, the cube root of 125 is five. And 81 is 27 times three, All right? Yep. Cube root of 27 is 3, so 3 times 3 is 9. The 3 stays under, so the final answer is 20 plus 9 cube roots of 3. And before somebody says it, no, that is not 29 cube roots of 3. You cannot add those coefficients because 20 doesn't have a cube root, so 9 does. Okay? You could have also done this from the beginning, and you could have said, well, the cube root of 125 is 5. and gotten 10 plus 10 plus 9 cube roots of 3, it still gives you 20 plus 9 cube roots of 3. Okay?